having me. Um, I wrote this piece uh, about the better part of two years ago now. Um, I was uh, overseas at the time and I was feeling homesick and um, uh, it just, yeah, it came out quite organically in that respect. It's called Place to Be. I'm born of England, but you're adopted son if you'll have me. 13 years here held in place by New Zealand gravity, it's down to earth. We're the second verse to anthems yet unwritten. The youngest the country's smitten in the throes of a first love affair with all that which grows and all those who care. And in refracted glare of sunlight through water. In a history in which we are all the authors because we are bucket bongs and Bob Marley songs along the peninsula of the Coromandel. We're politicians and jandals in a nation of vandals committed to tearing apart these old world standards. And we are alpine climbs and street corner rhymes and Marlboro wines tied up in a long strand of coastline that entwines us, binds us, defines us as sanity in a world steadily go in mad questions less press and found inside beer bottle caps if you read between the fault lines on the map you'll find us attached to the edge of the earth the sky impregnated the sea and to us they gave birth as we are more the squat cage and less the bench press as our need to impress isn't to the same extent that we need strong legs to carry us onwards and upwards we're a nation that crests mountains in Hillary's steps New Zealand is never land to the lost boys of England and Scotland and Ireland she's a foster mother we are Australia's younger, better looking brother. The Pacific. <laughs> The Pacific's best kept secret beneath cloud cover and we are the blooder. Colonial adventurers and warrior tribes runs through our veins on the inside which is why we glide through World Cup games. Big guys punching well above their weight and it'll be fake of me to pretend. I understand rugby but even I can see the majesty in the 1995 try when Jonah ran through an entire side like a bullet from a gun leaving English fullbacks shocked and stunned to fear New Zealand for years to come. To fear the speed at which big men run. Revere the seeds that we sprung from. Fear the fire the first men stole from the sun. Because we are long days after hard nights. Handshakes after fist fights. Despite losing our guys in 1915, we built monuments to Ataturk because we respect him. That sportsmanship to the greatest degree between the Aegean and the Black Sea, we made an ally out of an old enemy. This nation bled for its place in the world willingly as the Turk baptized and fired the Kiwi. And we are history and ink on shoulders cracked and boulders older than written scrolls or hobbit holes or severed stumps of flagpoles. We coast the west coast on a half tank and a spare tyre. We patch up broken hearts with duct tape and number eight wire. And we're leaving Londoners thinking, what the fuck? Because we're saying thank you from the back of the bus and covering absolutely everything in tons of ketchup. There's a side of love on our bit of rough. But this is a nation that taught me to be blunt. We are little boys from Otra without a packed lunch. So let's share this slice of heaven before we consume. So these words I say can stay true true to the tune as we are pretty clear on what's good and evil. Don't send our soldiers overseas to go and hurt people. Instead, our army of students with spades in Christchurch Cathedral. A million hands outstretched to protect the feeble. Speaking of broken steeples, as a people, we rebuild equal, if not greater, than it was before. Because our history is more than broken buildings anyway. Our history is built in the people who survive in the remains. Often our claim is to have led the world in the women's vote in 1893, not trying to rock the boat, but it was backfiring policy of Richard said and caused it accidentally. Don't, don't forget decades of protest by Shepard and her contemporaries. That's beautiful to me. Achieving perfection unintentionally like it's meant to be. Like the currents in the sea that carried Coupe to land on an Aotearoa beach and build our foundations in evergreen trees as we are parents who fought apartheid, grandparents who defied social norms, great-grandparents who died on the beaches of Gallipoli against machine guns and dysentery for the better world. I think we now define, that's right, that's pride that shines, like the beacons of Gondor. I've been yonder too long, and it's when you're gone you remember what's on these shores. But I'm back now strong. Drop my backpack at the door because these islands are worth crossing oceans for. Thank you. <laughs> I've got... Thank you. Thank you. Very much.